Onion Cycles podcast is about thought-provoking, emotion-evoking, action-driven, step-by-step guidance to explore the unique, glorious and wonderful ocean of your being. Because healing is a multi-layered process of getting to know oneself. Become the self-empowered empiric researcher by discovering the unique layers of your existence. With your host, Nadine Alma, welcome to the Holistic Healing Hub. Welcome to the Onion Cycles podcast. Hello and welcome back, my beloved, fellow, precious, wonderful healing onions. I am very honored that you decided to invest some more time in your healing journey and come back to listen to another episode. I love to be of service to you and I hope the content I produce is doing what it is supposed to do, meaning giving you some inspiration to try out the things we discuss, the techniques we use, the exercises I share on my worksheet. If you're here for the first time, a warm welcome to you too. The worksheet that I'm talking about, you can download for free on my website, www.wonderfinder.org. So be sure to check out today's worksheet as well. Today, we are going to continue our journey, The Art of Love. We are on part three. This is a four-part series that we're doing. And the majority of what I'm talking today as well is leaning strongly on the essay by Erich Fromm. I will put the link to the essay uh, into the description box below. Be sure, I advise, to check out his writing because it is absolutely beautiful and there is so much information that I could probably make a podcast simply dedicated to this one essay that he produced for a whole year. So um, what I'm presenting is concise and is very limited. Therefore, I advise you or suggest if you feel it resonates with you to check it out for yourself and dive deep. Today we are having story 11, episode 11, The Art of Love, part 3, which is basically part 2 of the theory because we have more theory today. Last week's episode was about the discussion on how we as humans, according to Erich Fromm, strive to escape separateness and come back to a state of oneness, at one and wholeness by four major ways, which are the orgasmic, orgastic and transcending one, conformity a second one, creative activity a third one, interpersonal fusion as the fourth one, and the essence underlying love being giving. So if you feel drawn to dive into that, the episode we did on that is story 10, episode 10. Feel free to go back and check that out. It is a good thing to do if you want to get the base on the further discussion that we will have today. Today everything will circle around the love that he describes in four different columns he put four different ways of loves to the discussion i will only discuss three of those today because the love of god source universe whatever you want to call it i will dedicate another episode towards that further down the line on our journey It is very expansive and I didn't want to just squeeze it into just so it is done. And a small disclaimer on the side. I know I said it before. I will say it again because it is 
a issue close to my heart that if you feel drawn to dive deeper, please really go back to his essay. There is so much valuable information that I will not cover in these episodes or on the worksheets for that. So there is, for example, a whole chapter about polarity, meaning the masculine and feminine energies that we all embody, both in our souls, in our system, in our existence. He also has a expansive chapter about motherly and fatherly love and what happens if one or the other falls short, abandons you, if they are overprotective or anxious and he dives deep into how they can lead to mental illnesses, neuroticism, even sadism and masochism. And it is a very illuminating and enriching process to read through what he has to say. Today we are diving into the three loves that are parental love, brotherly, sisterly love, or more communal love, if, if you will call it that, and romantic and erotic love. We will start with parental love, and I will only outline two of the points he makes when it comes to parental love, because like I said, his essay is absolutely full with information, and he has dedicated so much information towards parental love itself that I just thought I'll take the most general things out of the very specific examples he brings. Parental love he describes as a love for the helpless because a child is basically totally dependent on the care in order to even be able to survive. It is also uh, nice to realize that here lies the essence of why we try so hard to fit in or why we try so hard to find our own tribe is because we as a species are dependent on others. We are dependent on asking for help and receiving help in order to survive. So if you're ever in a state of mind where you feel like you can't go on and you need help, Never ever be ashamed to ask of help. Never ever be ashamed to stretch out your hand, open your heart and let your soul ask for help because the essence of us humans is that we need help. We are not solitary walkers on this earth. We are no renegades. We are no lone wolves. And in asking help and opening our souls and our hearts, with a question of will you assist me, will you support me, will you help me, opens up the conversation on how to heal thoroughly. We need community, there's no way around it and we need to let go as a society of the view that we are best when we are alone, that we need to be alone. Obviously, there is a unique journey for everyone and there might be a stage where you feel like you need to go into the woods and be a hermit for a couple of weeks, months or even years. But in essence, we humans are dependent on each other and admitting this and staying true to yourself and admitting and asking for help, there's nothing wrong with that. Just wanted to take that ahead because this is innately human. And as parents, the essence of parental love is to want to nurture and grow the child. Eventually, to the greatest pain and expression of love, which is to let it go. Parental love is when one becomes two, basically a mom births a child, so one becomes two, but eventually there will be two. Love is not that hard as an infant, but love for the growing child that especially once the child wants the separation, wants to get to know itself, free itself and form its own opinions and, and embarks on its own journey of life. That's when it gets hard to be 
apparent and still love and let go because in the end it's a wish to support the separation so unselfishness is when you give everything without anything in return unconditional love if you will and this is obviously easier said than done and in theory we all probably know that unconditional love is better than conditional love um, but he also says that this is where uh, most parents that have their own issues and haven't worked through them fail in creating a child or letting their child grow up and embark on the journey nurtured and strong in their sense of self and this leads me to the second point I wanted to discuss. The land of milk and honey is something that we all heard about. And in essence, the land of milk and honey as the promised land means that parental love does not only me mean meeting physical needs. So milk representing obviously the breast milk from the mum the dependence from the child on the mom for the majority of the first two years being its sole nourishment through the milk, warmth through the body and care and attention. And then he goes on to describe that most mothers and most parents are able to provide the milk for their child. But then you can see once the child grows and even as adults where the parental love stopped and didn't progress didn't expand into the honey aspect and the honey aspect he describes as the sweetness of life the joy of life the happiness the the it is good to be alive feeling that most parents don't pass on to their child and he essentially says that the parents directly implant their views on life into the child whether they try to sort of put it under the rug the child senses it so you can't really hide something from a child and and parents out there listening will know that their child is a reflection of themselves and their child is reflecting every single little age of themselves that they repressed, rejected, every aspect of themselves that they reject and repress will eventually be mirrored back by the child. And this also holds true for their worldview. Say we have an unselfish mother. An unselfish mother basically means that she does not want anything for herself. She basically is proud that she is giving everything for everyone else, but giving herself up completely. She gives herself no love at all. She, she sees it as a virtue that she is unselfish and far from what she thinks she instills in her child what it really does is it shows the child that their mother is depressed and tired and has a troubled mind and has um, trouble motivating herself has anxieties has an inability to keep love in the relationship or or keep work going um, which are the troubled symptoms connected to unselfishness so the child senses that their mom is deeply unhappy and that there is a very hidden and subtle hostility towards life itself so the problem there then becomes that the child isn't even allowed to talk on eye level with their mom about it because as soon as there is any sort of criticism they are made to feel bad because their mom has given everything for them so they're not even able to criticize anything so 
she masks the unselfishness as a virtue and thereby imposes an underlying feeling of life isn't fair, life isn't good and joy and happiness are our enemies. It is a struggle and it is hard to be alive. And this is just one example. He, he gives examples about what an anxious parent does, what an anxious outlook, a narcissistic outlook, an overprotective outlook on life does to a child. Um, versus if you give them honey, being bright, being loving, being inclusive, being positive, being not unselfish or selfish, being in love with oneself and in love with life and in love with everyone and not seeing any subtlety of hostility of badness in the world so he says that in order for a parent to be a quote unquote the perfect parent you not only need to give unconditional love for your helpless child in meaning you bear the separation and go on loving after the separation as well you also need to provide not only the milk the nurturing the nourishment of the physical needs you also need to provide honey meaning looking after yourself working through your own issues and having an overall happy outlook on life an outlook that provides your children with the trust that inherently life is good and that brings us to the brotherly sisterly love is what he calls it i understand it more of a we are all one so in essence to truly be able to love means that we don't put conditions on anyone and we don't put an exclusivity on our love meaning just because you're my brother just because you're my mother just because you're my spouse you're the only ones I love and everyone else is my enemy on the contrary true love and especially true unconditional love means that we need to learn that everyone out there is the same as us of course we're all unique beings but in essence we're all humans so in essence we all are able if we put the will and the work in to love everyone out there no matter what so it doesn't matter if you're ill it doesn't matter if you're ostracized it doesn't matter if you're poor if you're rich we're all the same and that's why we could love each other and that is what he calls brotherly and sisterly love he says that this kind of love is a love among equals so it means that today it's about me and tomorrow it's about you and there is no measurement in between on how much you give or how much I give it's just a I respect you I acknowledge you I will do um, everything in my power to nurture you and to assist you and to support you it is he says easy to love one's own flesh and blood um, this according to him it's not really an achievement although I personally feel like that there are a lot of families out there where um, not even that is provided but that's a different topic a, a brotherly sisterly love is love of those who do not serve a purpose so true love begins to unfold once we don't seek an advantage out of it if I love one I love all that's 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 the essence of what he's writing i resonate with that strongly not that i have accomplished this in any way but i i can resonate with that and and what he's saying and what he means in theory um and like like the practice is gonna come in our next episode but in theory i understand what he's saying he also makes a lot of um, comparisons to erotic and uh, romantic love. Like he, he, he basically says that the exclusivity in romantic love is that I fuse intensely with one person 
but I still love all. And I also love that he said that love is not just a feeling because because basically he he's right feelings come and go don't they so love stays with decision and with the will for it to be there and we are all one yes yet every one of us is unique and the paradox of it all is we can love everyone in the sense of brotherly and sisterly love but if we want to have romantic or erotic love there is some specifics that exist only between some and not all people and then he goes on to talk about erotic romantic love being the craving for complete fusion which basically brings us back to the strive for union the strive for at one moment and he says that there are like three different ways in we think that we have discovered the love of our lives so the one is this very intense um craving that we call falling in love meaning that we let all our barriers fall and that intimacy that comes out of it is so strong that we feel like we lose all sense we're crazy about each other but in the end the craziness subsides and when the exploration is done we are left exhausted quickly and go on to the new thing he also says that one form of the romantic erotic love is when we feel like we can open up totally to the other person with our hopes our dreams our anxieties being childish or having common interests even showing anger for example and that way we overcome the feeling of separateness but over time even that reduces and the spark that is so often described is not there anymore so it ends with the same notion as in the first part that we just go out and want to find a new love uh, someone else we can feel close to and with whom we try to fuse and try to escape separateness uh, he also says that the deceptive character of fusion through sexual intercourse is something that needs to be talked about more because sexual intercourse can come from a variety of emotions and basically from any strong emotion including love so that's why it is so deceptive because the strive for fusion through sex can come from the notion of wanting to conquer wanting to even hurt or destroy someone it can come from loneliness it can come from vanity it can come from so many different emotions that we sometimes lose the sense of tenderness plays into all of this because essentially tenderness is what is a good indicator um to discern what is a strong emotion that leads us to have sexual intercourse with or without love involved because all the other emotions i listed for example conquest or um uh, loneliness or vanity they are basically transitory actions so you get something out of it and most times afterwards you feel sort of lost and you feel sort of unsatisfied ver versus when you actually have love involved into it that love inspires the wish for the fusion the wish um to become one through the sexual intercourse and then tenderness plays into it but tenderness is very interesting as well the way he describes it because it can be both physical and non-physical and because it can be physical and non-physical tenderness is very much the only 
good resource for us to discern if there is love involved or not. And if there is no tenderness on either side, on both sides, then we can be pretty much sure that there is an other feeling rooted in what was happening there. So the premise is that I love from the essence of my being and experience the other person from the essence of their being. That basically defines erotic, romantic love. He then also goes on to talk about the love of God, which we can also call source or universe or Gaia or whatever you feel comfortable with. In essence, the love of something that is not graspable, that is um, relying on faith. He has stunning views on faith and on the expression of religious organization and how they grew and how there is a divide between patriarchy and matriarchal societies and how that came about and all of that but I won't dive into that today it is the fourth way he of love he describes in his essay I will come back to that um, further down the line on our healing journey because it is very essential and I love the way he frames and outlines all of it and with all of that said these are the three main love variations he describes parental love brotherly sisterly or communal love and erotic romantic love love of god source energy will come later down the line but i thought these are the most general aspects of the separate versions of love that he describes and i hope truly that some of this is new um, information for you that it strikes a beat that it sort of makes you feel like there is something to it and you can see some sense in it it helps you understand yourself better it may help understand other people in your life better the better we understand ourselves the better we understand others and the more the love and the respect and the care for each other will grow i do thank you for taking the time to tune in again i always feel so blessed there are some people out there listening and uh, i would just love to have a conversation with you all so please let me know in the comments what i can do to make my content better for you so that it becomes the best resource for you to assist you on your healing journey i am so proud and so happy that we are here together sharing this space i feel like healing is the equivalent of self-love which we will come to in our next episode. And doing this great work, the most important work really, will enable us all to connect on a much deeper level or a level of our souls, a level of connection that cannot be achieved if we don't dive deep into our own shadows, into our own hurt, into our own pain and transmute the energies Love is messy, love isn't always just rainbows and butterflies and unicorns, but love is the essence. So I wanted to say that I do truly realize this content out of my own love for this world, my own love and respect and care for human beings. I have the utmost love and respect for all of you out there. I admire you and I know you're doing the best you can every day of your life. I love you very much. I appreciate you very much. I wish you a wonderful rest of the week. And please don't forget to ask yourself whenever you feel called to with a decision that feels hard or where you don't have an answer right away. What would a person do that loves you? 
themselves. And with that said, I'm looking forward to reconnecting next week. I can't wait to hear your stories on how this question influenced your life. And I hope it is for the better. And I see you, I understand you, and I love you very much. My beloved fellow precious onions. <laughs> <laughs>